Be a nice and active call at Howard Hospital as a resident while having a sickle cell crisis. I'm not telling anyone because I did not want to see me than anybody else. You are going to have difficult nights. You're going to have nights when things don't go your way. Patients don't survive. You don't have the outcomes that you want. And it is on those nights that you have to dig deepest and recognize why you decided to get in to a field that, where you can administer care to others. It is clear that the disparities that exist in our society are causing us significant harm. A black man who lives in Ward 78 has a life expectancy that's 22 years less than a white woman in Ward 3. Three miles in the nation's capital, the richest, probably strongest nation in the world. Right here in this nation's capital is a difference in the life expectancy of a black man and a white woman in 22 years. That is nobody else's problem but yours. And every single day you have to make sure that you give your best. So the next thing I want you to be mindful of is to commit yourself to excellence. To make sure that every day when you get up and you go to work, when you are studying, when you are preparing yourself to do the next thing, that you do it with that in mind. That if you do it well and you do it with excellence, you will change those numbers, you will change those statistics. But you're gonna do that one person at a time. So I always want you to remember to not look past the next patient or the next person you're gonna see. There's always a tendency that we have to be somewhere, we have to watch, we have to get on to the next thing. And I don't want you to get caught up in that cycle. I want you to stop yourself long enough to appreciate that the very next person you see is the most important person that you will see. My wife and I lived in Connecticut before my kids were born. That's my first job at the University of Connecticut in a small, sleepy town called Farmington. So we would go down to New York City and stay at Times Square to get as much excitement as we could. And one weekend, while we were there, I got on the elevator. And as I was going down the elevator, uh, going up the elevator, a guy put on the look very much like Ali Baldwin. He got on the elevator and he said hi to everyone. He said hi, how are you doing? You look great today. The weather is nice. He looked everybody in the eye. I got on the elevator with a big smile on my face. I went to my room hurriedly and I told my wife, I just met the most interesting guy ever. He was the nicest guy. I spoke to everybody. He looked them in the eye. Because we all get the elevator and we look at our shoes and we look at our phone again. You didn't get a new text. You didn't get a new email. But that's the level of dehumanization that we've got used to. My wife looked at me and she calmly said, That guy is crazy. You don't talk to strangers in Times Square. <laughs> and I thought, you know, she might be right. That evening we would go out and I would get back in the elevator again. That same guy got on the elevator. I was so excited. I looked at my wife, I was trying to communicate to her. I looked at that's the guy I was sending for. The guy looked at my wife and said, oh my gosh, you're gorgeous, it's a beautiful dress. We got over there and beat him and my wife said, man, that's the nicest guy I've ever met. <laughs> and I said, that that's the guy I just did, but I didn't know what was I think that story to simply say that sometimes we want big solutions for the simple problems in our lives. And all we need to do sometimes is to think of the next thing that we can do, the smallest thing that we can do. How can we amplify the next person's humanity that we see? Simply by saying hello, simply by looking them in the eye and greeting them for kindness. And that brings me to the next thing that I want you guys to exemplify when you go out. Into